Good evening, everyone. The Priory clock in Brillington has just struck six o'clock. So welcome to prayers from the Priory Church in Bridlington as part of the prayers for the nation in this second lockdown of the coronavirus 2020. Um, I've altered um, the, the view here in the Chapel of St John in Bridlington so that the statue of St John is just over my shoulder. Of course, because of the um, selfie function on the camera, the inscription is all the other way around for people watching it, but I just thought we'd ring the changes and remember St John ever praying for us, always pray for us, Prior of Bridlington is the petition, and we're reminded of that as we see him over my shoulder here. Scruffily dressed again, I have to confess, uh, good reason for it, I've actually spent the afternoon in the garden, believe it or not, and what's even more incredible is I've mown all the grass at the rectory this afternoon. It was looking absolutely disgraceful, all long and tufty, and I was really embarrassed by how bad it was. And it was so bad, I thought I'd got nothing to lose. But I did have just a wind of opportunity, both in terms of time and the weather. So I seized it, and I have to say, I'm chuffed with the result. And I hope it will look respectable for the rest of the winter. So, therefore, I'm unashamedly scruffy. I feel virtuously scruffy because of all the work that I've been doing. Now, in the cycle of prayer for this call for the nation, <clears throat> we're called today to pray for schools and colleges, children and young people. And well, we might do so. Um, so many year groups in the schools in Bridlington are self-isolating at the moment. At Headlands, the, uh, the sixth form, uh, year 11 has, uh, was late last night, uh, email went out. Uh, that Headlands Year 11 was to isolate. Um, somebody's just put a laughing emoji up there at that point. I don't quite know why. Um, year 11, as I say, at uh, Headlands is self-isolating as of today. Year 8 already self-isolating. I think at Bridlington School, it's only Year 7s and Year 11 that are there in their entirety. Year 8 and the sixth form are self-isolating. Cohorts within 9 and 10 are self-isolating. In our primary schools at this side, year three at base school is self-isolating. Year six at Burlington Infant School is self-isolating. I think across the other side of town, folks, some, some groups from Our Lady of St. Peter's are self-isolating. And so it goes on. I don't claim to have a comprehensive list, but clearly uh, it is quite remarkable how many of our children and young people are out of school because of this second wave of coronavirus. So much so that this afternoon, the National Education Union has called for all schools in Hull and East Riding to be closed, except for children of key workers and vulnerable children. Um, I don't suppose for a moment that that call will be heeded because Boris Johnson has invested too much political capital in keeping schools open. But nevertheless, the call has been made by the union and that call has been supported by the chief executive of the Hull and East Riding Hospitals and by the Hull Director of Public Health. Such is the crisis uh, in the hospitals at the moment. Today, the BBC National News is running a piece from the intensive care unit in Hull. Vicky Young of BBC National News is in Hull reporting from their ICU. It's been described as a health emergency, the situation in Hull. And the, um, the Look North that's broadcast from Leeds, um, and I have to say as an unrepentant Wesley, that's the, where the Look North that RTV is tuned into, um, that's reporting uh, from Scarborough, where I think hospitalisations have doubled in the last week. And of course, that is our hospital here in Bridlington. If you're not aware of the situation in Bridlington, we have a district hospital here, which is a, a satellite, if you like, of Scarborough Hospital. It doesn't have accident and emergency. It doesn't have an ICU. Um, so if we need to go to ICU, it is either Scarborough or down to Hull that we would be taken. So clearly a desperate situation um, spreading out from our schools. So it's very appropriate that this evening it is with particular intent for schools and for children and young people that we are praying as a nation. I will be reading this evening's psalm. It is a Psalm 71. It just occurs to me to say um, about reading psalms that often um, it's about conflict with, with other people. 
um, suggesting that, that, that there are baddies out to get us. I think as we read the Psalms, we may well want to think not so much about you know, external agencies out to get us, but we may think about those forces with which we wrestle within our own being when we think about the, they are out to oppress me, where it's those forces within ourselves that are out to oppress us or to betray us or to shame us. And if you read them in that sense, um, they, they can uh, resonate far more um, profoundly, I think, with uh, how we experience life to be. Um, and it may be that when we're thinking about forces oppressing us, it's not people, but in this case it's the virus that we're thinking about and praying about as we say psalms together. So a very shortened form of evening prayer uh, for this time of pandemic. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Psalm 71 In you, O Lord, do I seek refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be for me a stronghold to which I may ever resort. Send out to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence even from my youth. Upon you have I leaned from my birth when you drew me from my mother's womb. My praise shall be always of you. I have become a portent to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Do not cast me away in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength fails. For my enemies are talking against me, and those who lie in wait for my life to take counsel together. They say, God has forsaken him. Pursue him and take him, because there is none to deliver him. O oh God, be not far from me. Come quickly to help me, O oh God. Let those who are against me be put to shame and disgrace. Let those who seek to do me evil be covered with scorn and reproach. But as for me, I will hope continually and will praise you more and more. My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and salvation all the day long, for I know no end of the telling. I will begin with the mighty works of the Lord God. I will recall your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, you have taught me since I was young, and to this day I tell of your wonderful works. Forsake me not, O oh God, when I am old and grey-headed, till I make known your deeds to the next generation and your power to all that are to come. Your righteousness, O God, reaches to the heavens. In the great things you have done, who is like you, O God? What troubles and adversities you have shown me, and yet you will turn and refresh me and bring me from the deep of the earth again. Increase my honour. 
turn again and comfort me. Therefore will I praise you upon the harp for your faithfulness, O my God. I will sing to you with the lyre, O Holy One of Israel. My lips will sing out as I play to you, and so will my soul, which you have redeemed. My tongue also will tell of your righteousness all the day long, for they shall be shamed and disgraced who sought to do me evil. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Faithful Lord, living Saviour, in youth and old age, from the womb to the grave, may we know your protection and proclaim your great salvation to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so this Monday evening, we pray for all those involved in shaping of young lives. We give God thanks for the sacrifice and commitment of teachers and all those involved in serving children and young people in education. We pray that all might be nurtured and cared for and that every needful resource would be made available, that all lives can flourish even in these difficult times and that no one would be overlooked. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, we entrust to your tender care those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe. Comfort and heal them, and restore them to health and strength through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we give thanks for more good news about a potential vaccine, we pray that the trials of that will be successful and that it may be as effective as its producers are expecting. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick and your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit that through their work many will be restored to health through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Streets of Light Prayer. Almighty God, your Son Jesus gives hope to an anxious world and floods our lives with the light of your love. Brighten our lives with your light. Enrich our relationships with your love and strengthen our communities with your hope. Let our streets become streets of light this Christmas and help us to spread the message of love and hope through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, good night, everyone. I hope to see you tomorrow.